Today is Friday, October 1st. What to know about the deal lawmakers made to avoid a government shutdown and the next big deadline right around the corner. Also, new rules for immigration agents about which migrants get deported and why thousands of people are expected to rally all around the U.S. this weekend. Plus, the changes that will slow down some mail delivery, the scam that took money from millions of people with androids, and it's set the music icons performing this year's Super Bowl halftime show. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. It's official. The federal government is staying open, at least for a couple more months. The Senate and the House both approved a short-term spending bill in back-to-back votes. Then-President Biden signed it just hours before a shutdown would have gone into effect. Now, this will keep the government running through early December and give lawmakers more time to craft a full-year spending measure that will fund federal agencies and their programs. It's actually pretty common for Congress to wait until the last minute to get this done. But Congress is not exactly out of the woods yet, because another crisis is still right around the corner. Lawmakers need to raise or suspend the debt ceiling sometime in the next 17 days. Otherwise, the Treasury Secretary says the government will not be able to pay its bills on time. Remember, raising the debt ceiling doesn't authorize new spending. It lets the government raise money to pay for expenses already authorized. The U.S. government has never defaulted on its debt obligations before. So economists aren't totally sure what would happen. But they believe it would trigger an economic recession, a widespread stock market sell-off, a spike in interest rates, job losses, and more. To be continued. Well, soon, fewer undocumented immigrants in the U.S. will need to worry about getting deported. The Homeland Security Department issued new guidance to immigration officers. It says immigration status alone should not be the basis of a decision to deport someone. So officers with Immigration and Customs Enforcement, a.k.a. ICE, should not try to arrest farm workers, elderly people, and others. But instead, they should focus on immigrants who really pose a threat to national security and public safety, or people who have crossed the border recently. There's an estimated 11 million undocumented immigrants living in the U.S., but most of them have lived here for years. So Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says ICE just doesn't have the resources to deport all of them. It really will be up to agents to weigh the pros and cons of detaining and deporting each person they come across and make those decisions on their own. And they're being told to focus mostly on people who could be violent. The new rules go against the Trump administration policy that let agents arrest and deport anyone who was in the U.S. illegally. Already, some Republicans have said the new rules from the White House have no respect for the law. On the other side, immigration advocates have either praised the new ICE priorities or are still skeptical immigration agents will show restraint, so they want even more changes. For now, though, the new policy goes into effect at the end of next month. Unfortunately, a sad trend seems to be getting worse. A new report from the Defense Department found suicide rates among U.S. troops went up by more than 41 percent from 2015 to 2020, and they jumped by 15 percent last year alone. Military leaders have said the COVID-19 pandemic added a lot of stress for service members. Troops were called to help provide testing, then vaccines, while struggling with the virus in their personal lives. Last year, they also dealt with continued war zone deployments, natural disasters, and some violent civil unrest. But the Defense Department says it still can't fully explain the recent increase in suicides. Now military leaders are promising they're taking these findings seriously. If you or someone you know needs help, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline toll-free number is 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Hundreds of marches are scheduled in all 50 states this weekend to show support for abortion access nationwide. And organizers say they want to protest the recent restrictions in Texas specifically. Remember, one month ago, Texas banned abortions as soon as doctors can detect a heartbeat. That's usually about six weeks into a pregnancy and sometimes before women know they're pregnant. So this weekend, marchers also want to get the attention of the Supreme Court. Justices are beginning their next term on Monday, and they're expected to hear a case about Mississippi trying to enforce an abortion ban after 15 weeks of pregnancy. More than 650 marches are planned for tomorrow, along with virtual events. For the one in Washington, D.C., leaders requested permits for 10,000 people to show up for the march that will end outside of the Supreme Court. It's not clear yet if there will be a large showing of counter-protesters at these events, but in the last week, thousands of people in places like Utah and Pennsylvania have also attended March for Life rallies meant to oppose abortions. 
Well, you might want to rethink any East Coast beach trips this weekend. Forecasters are keeping a close eye on Hurricane Sam. As of this morning, it's a powerful Category 4 storm, and it's expected to stay strong for at least the next couple of days. The good news is the hurricane is not expected to actually hit the U.S., but even with Sam out at sea, the National Hurricane Center says it'll cause life-threatening surf and rip currents on the East Coast all the way up to Canada this weekend. By the way, forecasters are also keeping an eye on Tropical Storm Victor. It's expected to become Hurricane Victor in the next couple of days, but for now it looks like it's also going to stay away from land. Victor is still significant, though. It's the 20th named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Last year is the only other year in history when 20 named storms had formed by the end of September. More news coming up, but first, thanks to our sponsor, Noom. We've all felt that pressure to fit other people's expectations, whether it's about career, family, or appearance. But not worrying about what other people think or do and finding whatever works for you can be so freeing. So that's why Noom wants you to know you don't have to be on a strict diet or follow the rigorous gym schedules you might see on Instagram to look and feel your best. Noom uses a psychology-based approach to find a healthier balance that fits into your lifestyle. And that's the approach that tends to lead to real long-term sustainable results that you want. In fact, 80% of Noom users finish the program and more than 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. No rules with Noom, just the knowledge and wisdom to help you build healthier habits. It's meant to be empowering, not stress-inducing. All you need is a daily 10-minute check-in. So sign up for your trial and get psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goals. Just go to Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash newsworthy. Again, you can sign up for your trial at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash newsworthy. Starting today, so-called snail mail is getting even slower. The United States Postal Service is making some changes to cut down on operating costs, and that includes slower delivery times for customers. Standard delivery for first-class mail used to be three days. That applied to things like bills, tax documents, wedding invitations, birthday cards, and more. Well, now those items could take up to five days instead, especially if they're being mailed from across the country. The Washington Post says western states are expected to experience the longest delays, as well as parts of Florida and southern Texas. The slower delivery is just one part of the Postal Service's 10-year plan to manage its massive debt. Other changes include cutting down post office hours and higher postage prices, also starting today. Fewer teenagers are using electronic cigarettes these days. At least that's based on the government's annual survey of middle and high school students. In it, about 11% of high schoolers admitted to vaping. That's down from nearly 20% last year and 28% in 2019. Experts say it's possible the pandemic-related restrictions influence this drop. Teens may have been less likely to vape during remote learning, especially if their parents were also working from home. But the survey also revealed that flavored e-cigarettes are still a big problem. Nearly 85% of teen users said they preferred flavored products like fruit, candy, and mint flavors. The FDA banned flavored pods last year, but flavored disposables are still legal. The survey comes as the FDA is still weighing which e-cigarette brands will be allowed to stay on the market. A decision is expected soon. The Google Play Store was recently hit by a massive scam campaign, and investigators say it impacted up to 10 million people with Android devices. The security firm Zimperium says cybercriminals ran more than 200 apps in the Play Store for nearly a year. They looked pretty normal, too. One was a translator, another was a heart rate monitor, and there were some puzzles as well. When people downloaded the apps, they'd get notifications saying they'd won a prize. Then the app would redirect them to another website and ask for a phone number. But instead of getting a prize, users started getting charged $42 a month on their phone bills. Symperium says the malicious apps were downloaded anywhere between 4 and 17 million times, and scammers made millions of dollars off of them. Google says it's identified these apps, removed them from the Play Store, and banned the app developers. But the company warns the scams are still live on third-party app stores. Scarlett Johansson and Disney have officially settled their differences. This brings an end to what was the first major fight between a studio and a star over recent changes in movie rollouts. Remember, Johansson sued Disney soon after her Marvel movie, Black Widow, came out. Johansson said her contract guaranteed it would come out exclusively in theaters first, and her salary was based largely on box office ticket sales. But the studio decided to release it on Disney Plus the same day it came out in theaters. So the actress sought a $50 million payout from Disney on top of the $20 million she made for her work on the movie. Disney pushed back at first, saying Johansson was showing a, quote, callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the pandemic. Since then, the two made a deal. 
The exact terms of the settlement were not released, but both said they're glad the dispute is over and they look forward to continuing to collaborate. Well, this year's Super Bowl halftime show is going to include hip-hop and R&B royalty. We're talking Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. This will be the first time all five of them will perform on stage together. Combined, they have 44 Grammys and 22 number one albums on the Billboard 200. But the Super Bowl is an honor all its own. Dr. Dre says it will be, quote, one of the biggest thrills of my career. This year's Super Bowl is happening in Inglewood, California, just outside of Los Angeles, on February 13th. This year, you can watch the game and the halftime show on NBC. That's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel-good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is something stopping you from achieving your goals? I've had moments in my life where I realized fear or at other times burnout was preventing me from doing my best work and being my happiest self. But when you get to the core of what's going on, you can do something about it. And BetterHelp wants to help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and help match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And if you don't like your match, you can easily switch counselors until you find the right one for you. Then you connect in a safe, private, and convenient online environment. It's also up to you whether you communicate via text, a phone call, a video session, or all of the above. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. And of course, anything you share is confidential. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Join more than a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Feel Good Friday. People in Thailand have come up with a unique strategy to help the environment and keep people safe from COVID-19 at the same time. Groups are collecting millions of plastic bottles, shredding them down, then weaving the threads into fabric to make personal protective equipment. Volunteers say because a lot of the process is done in very high temperatures, germs and bacteria are killed as well. So far, they've made thousands of water-resistant reusable suits. They're being donated to hospitals around the country and to Buddhist temples to protect monks who are responsible for cremating COVID-19 victims. As Reuters reports, volunteers can make one PPE suit out of just 18 plastic bottles. And since the middle of last year, about 18 million bottles have been used for this purpose. Although the finished product is not medical grade, people involved in the endeavor say it does offer at least some protection and it's helping keep a lot of people safe and healthy. We'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode all about vaccine mandates and whether they'll hold up in court. Then tune in Monday for your next news roundup. And don't forget, you still have a chance to enter our Instagram giveaway through Sunday. Just find the recent giveaway post on our feed at Newsworthy Pod. Thanks to Scott's Cheap Flights, Good Good Good, and KiwiCo for contributing such great prizes. For now, thanks for listening and have a great day. Hold up. 